Welcome to the registration portion of the tutorial. In the first part of this video, we will go over the various registration framework components. We'll learn how to configure a registration pipeline, the importance of initialization, and experiment with uh, various initialization approaches. In the second part of the video, we will go over the options for non-rigid registration and learn how to evaluate registration res results. Finally, we conclude with a specific clinical application, construction of long bone panoramic images. So without further ado, let's start looking at the notebook. So uh, the uh, standard components for registration are the optimizer, similarity metric, and interpolator, although in most cases we will stick with the linear interpolator. In addition, there is the transformation that we want to optimize, and uh, this is the general overview of the uh, Simple ITK and ITK version 4 registration framework. One thing to note is that uh, the image types have to be of floating type, so either SITK float32 or SITK64, and uh, that is the general overview of it. Optimizers, uh, if you've watched the earlier videos, this is just a rehash of uh, the, them. So again, we have optimizers that are uh, based only on the function value itself, variants on optimizers that also depend on the gradient, and the uh, limited memory uh, optimizers that are uh, essentially appropriate for the uh, optimizing the B-spline transform which has a large number of parameters. All the rest are more appropriate for uh, low dimensional uh, transformation types. So similarity metrics, those are the ways we compare our images and we have mean squares, demons, correlation if there's a linear relationship, a neighborhood correlation, essentially looking at the correlation in uh, regions, and mutual information to variants. Uh, interpolators, SimpliTK supports a large number of interpolators, but um, we will stick, as I said earlier, with linear. It's a compromise between a uh, performance and uh, behavior of how good is this uh, interpolator. For uh, again, if we uh, work with uh, label images, you would be using nearest neighbor because you don't want to introduce information that isn't originally there. So let's start running the notebook. As a first thing, we'll just read our two images. One is a, a CT, the other is an MR, and we have a fixed window and level because these are high dynamic range images. We'll modify the intensities so that they are uh, visually uh, clear and again we can control the GUI here allows us to control the uh, window level here for the CT and again this is just for visualization purposes so and we can scroll through the stack and see the various structures so We'll start with a classic registration approach because this is multimodal MR to CT registration. We use mutual information as the similarity metric. We'll have 50 bins for estimating the probability density functions. Our sampling strategy is random and we essentially sample just 1% of the data. That's all that we need. We use, as I said again, linear op uh, interpolator and a gradient descent optimizer and uh, as all things uh, optimization you have to start somewhere uh, when we don't know any better we use this uh, centered transform initializer it's usually good enough and uh, it allows us to essentially place both volumes uh, so that their, their centers are aligned. So let's see how that looks. And this UI allows us to add points 
here and the, they're mapped to the other uh, image using the transformation uh, that is known and in this case it's the identity transformation excuse me it's not the identity it's the center transform initializer that what whatever aligned the two centers of these volumes obviously the uh, anatomy is not aligned and let's scroll to some other point and just to confirm that yes we add the point and this is where it's mapped to on the other volume so obviously these are not aligned and uh, we would like to align them so we create a re Im instantiate an image registration method as i said earlier we want to use mutual information and this is the number of bins that we use we uh, are using random sampling on the image and only one percent of the data that's all that we uh, think we need we might need more but we'll see uh, interpolator is linear and gradient descent optimizer number of iterations is a hundred we start with a small number of iterations because initially when you're Im implementing a registration uh, framework you want to uh, see that all your settings are uh, working well, that it's converging and that it's doing so in a timely manner. So you have early termination by just setting the number of uh, iterations to a small number. Another thing that uh, needs to be noted, because we're doing a rigid registration in this case, that's determined again by our uh, choice here, we did. Uh, we selected for the initialization. Where we told the initializer in, uh, set the values into an Euler 3D uh, transformation. Because we're working with a transformation that its parameter space includes both tr both translation and rotation, and millimeters and radians are not commensurate, and we would like the change of one millimeter and one degree one radian to have similar effect we have this uh, setting setting automatically the scale so these parameters are scaled during the optimization we'll start by uh, running it without setting this and we'll see what happens but we set the initial transform we don't want it to change in place if we have in place true this transformation will be modified and you don't and that's about it and we add commands this is the command observer pattern if you're familiar we add functions and, and when an event happens during the registration process it will call these functions so we have a start plotting end plot when the registration starts and ends something to do with multi-resolution we'll see in a second and uh, iterations so we will plot the uh, similarity metric as the iterations go along and then we just execute and always this is the rule of thumb always print the final metric value and print the optimizer stopping condition you want to know why you terminated the registration it might be early termination and that's not good so let's run it and see what happens and this does not look good it did not behave uh, well it was not converging it was just bumping along there and that is most likely because we didn't scale things correctly and as i said earlier don't forget to auto scale the non-commensurate parameters and this looks much better where we're uh, converging and let's see what happens and we seem to have hit the uh, early termination criteria as I said earlier we set it we see that it's converging it's doing so ra rather rapidly so let's increase the number and we can go t for a thousand and it will uh, stop if it convert really converges it will stop before reaching that uh, upper limit and let's see what happens there and we can see it already went beyond the hundred so really it did uh, terminate early in our previous uh, attempt and now it's going beyond 200 let's see how close to a thousand it will get 
and there it is. So it's uh, it stopped after 261 iterations, and it seems to be converging. So that that seems to be working. And again, you when you're implementing a registration, start as simple as you can. It's a single uh, level and a, a standard optimizer gradient descent, and that's it. But if this doesn't work, we can go for more sophisticated and for example in this case the pyramid and we set how to shrink the data and how to smooth it when we're building the pyramid and that the smoothing sigmas here are actually in physical units and let's see what happens when we run that and you can see the change in uh, resolution so this is for the highest resolution starts runs converges here and then it goes down the pyramid again starts a run and finally last level of the pyramid and uh, one last thing to note is that the uh, registration framework is pretty fast and what we're seeing here is primarily as a result of all this plotting that is happening during the registration and that you don't take me for my word let's just see what happens if I just comment out all this plotting and rerun the registration and that's it it's pretty much instantaneous as you saw and uh, that that only difference was that I stopped the plotting so this is usually the uh, workflow that you would have start with a simple uh, setup see that it can it's going in the right direction increase the number of iterations it's still going in the right direction you're happy with the result that's great then you stop there and you remove all the uh, observers and you just run the registration so now that uh, we've registered let's see if this thing did anything useful and we have our UI here and let's click on this bone spur here in this region and we see that it matches there we can zoom in to the two regions and see that it makes sort of makes sense where it's touching here close to the bone and here slightly offset again very similar let's go uh, back to the home position and select I need to move to the edit again mode select a point here on the ventricles let's see if it's how does it look how does it appear here and yep it's nearby but again not perfect registration but close enough for our purposes of a demo so let's Go back home, and as you can see, the uh, points now really are much better aligned than in our original uh, after initialization. Now, if we're satisfied with the results, we can resample the moving image onto the fixed. And usually, uh, we also like to write the transformation to a file, and that's exactly what we do here. And now it's persistent, it's on our hard drive, and we're good to go. Now with the uh, ITK v4 uh, coordinate systems, those are slightly more complex than the classical registration where their virtual image domain was introduced and now we have a uh, transformation that maps from the virtual to the fixed, from the virtual domain to the moving image, and finally another the optimized transformation which maps from the moving back onto itself. Now uh, by default, the virtual and fixed image domains are coincide, so TF is the identity transformation. And when we're uh, implementing a registration uh, workflow, we can set any of these three uh, to have initial values. The TF and TM are not modified during the uh, optimization process. TOPT is modified. So... Uh, set initial is the one that will be modified set fixed set moving are once you set them 
they're not they're not modified uh, during the uh, registration process so this is essentially how the uh, transformations are used to map a point from the fixed coordinate system to the moving coordinate system and now we can just modify the uh, previous example that we used to uh, uh, initialize with uh, initialize the uh, moving initial transformation where I just used the initial transformation there and the optimized transformation is just uh, there with uh, without an, any initial value I just created it here it's the identity and this will be modified now if I use this scheme at the end the re the uh, result of the registration is not uh, the final transformation the final transformation is a composition of the initial transformation the initial uh, moving uh, value here and the result from the transformation so we'll just run this and see that indeed it works that way and you see the multi-scale again as we previously did that and let's scroll through these register this let's see tip of the nose and tip of the nose goes to tip of the nose let's see if the eyeball here and it goes to the eyeball and let's see if the ears and that's not it's barely visible here but you can see that they are registered and that with the uh, linked cursor approach here we can essentially measure distances afterwards so but the main thing with all of these registration approaches is that this is an optimization and we're trying to reach a minimum and if you're initialized far away from that minimum you will likely converge to a local uh, minimum and uh, that's not what you want so initialization becomes very important and uh, often you uh, if you're lucky not often excuse me if you're lucky you can do nothing uh, hope springs eternal you might be lucky and when you're not initializing that means that you're uh, using the identity transformation center transform initializer you can use geometry which just aligns the centers of the two volumes or you can use uh, intensity moments if your uh, content uh, is unique and not circular if you have a circular object inside the image moments won't help you uh, and another option is to use the exhaustive optimizer which is essentially a grid search as I, it says here never underestimate brute force it you don't uh, need to initialize well but just close enough so if you're able to do a grid search as an initial step that might give you the best result uh, for the secondary registration where you're trying to really converge finally if all else fails there's always the human in the loop manual initialization if you identify three points corresponding points across the two images you have a closed form solution for rigid registration and that can serve as your uh, initialization humans were very robust to noise to all kinds of artifacts so sometimes you do end up with manual initialization and uh, that's uh, uh, part of life so uh, what we will be working with here is the uh, abdominal phantom from CIRS. It's an interesting phantom in that it's box shaped and it is not clear uh, what, what is the head re uh, area, re what is the head side and what is the foot side of that. So it's easy to make mistakes in positioning it uh, and identifying the position in a CT or MR because you're just placing a box that pretty much looks symmetric so we've loaded the uh, two images and let's just look at what would it look what is the result if we just use the uh, hope <laughs> approach so let's 
like there, and obviously that's not something good. Let's go somewhere else on this. And again, outside of scope, so these are really not even remotely aligned to each other. So, one of the things, as I said, because this is a box, when the operator is acquiring the um, CT or MR, they enter what is the patient position. And with this, it's not clear if it's head first supine, head first prone, uh, or feet first. So again, uh, let's see. And we can see that the metadata that tells you what is the patient position here is head first supine for both uh, these data sets uh, patient no uh, name test and ZY wonder what those initials stand for anyway so the other the option of be going beyond a uh, identity transform is let's just center the volumes that should probably get us something better hey that looks pretty okay so let's go and see what else we can mark in this volume and let's mark this point and that doesn't look so correct anymore again here and yes it does look correct but one thing to notice is that this volume in this region the simulated ribs are symmetric and symmetry is the bane of registration we'll see uh, what uh, a bit more about that shortly now to use the exhaustive optimizer we are defining a grid in the parameter space and just evaluating the similarity metric in that grid and taking the lowest value so uh, we define what are the steps because we're using an Euler uh, a translation and rotation we define the steps we want and the optimizer scales and in this case we just want to uh, look at different orientations of this phantom we're not uh, we don't want to deal with the uh, uh, translation because the translation will take from the center transform initializer so this is, these are the angles that we're playing with and the, and, uh, the uh, translation is from the center transform initializer and let's see what we get there and we just run the optimizer and let's see and hey it's flipped is this correct let's see In this region, we can see the anatomy is not symmetric. So let's click here. And yes, that makes much more sense than uh, when we just used the uh, centered transform initializer. So these images, though uh, it said head, f head first supine for both of them, apparently that's not exactly what was uh, happening there. So let's click on this blood vessel, simulated blood vessel, and we can see the registration is off. It's not perfect, but it's close enough for actually running uh, registration afterwards. So this is just an initialization step. And finally, if all else fails, we could do manual initialization. We would select points here. I've already done that. I'm not gonna waste our time on that and these are hard-coded here but you can select points get the points from the GUI and run the uh, landmark based transform initializer it essentially does a registration closed form and uh, in this case I'm using a unit quaternion to represent the 3d rotation so let's again go to that region which was not symmetric and click there and we can see yep this is close enough it's for our purposes and that it dealt with the uh, issue that 
these are rotated 180 degrees from each other. Uh, there, it's let's say this: there is almost no algorithm that is based on uh, optimization, iterative optimization, that will be able to rotate your images by 180 degrees. So. Uh, uh, the, these are the uh, various approaches you can take to initialize your uh, registration. And now we'll move over to uh, the more advanced registration using uh, non-rigid transformations. And let's start with, uh, again, in Simple ITK we have two types of non-rigid uh, transformations that are local, that have a local domain. That local domain could be the whole image or just a portion of it, but it's not uh, the. Uh, it is local. So we have freeform deformation. It's bsplan based and demons uh, based uh, algorithms. And uh, in the second portion of this notebook, we'll look at registration evaluation because that is an important uh, aspect of registration. If you don't evaluate your results correctly, then you're reporting uh, in numbers that don't make much sense. So again, or are uh, not uh, really reflecting the quality of your registration. And, and there we'll, we'll, we will talk about target registration error, the notion that it is spatially variant, and possibly the use of surrogate uh, metrics for reg uh, evaluating registration and the, uh, the uh, uh, notion that there is no perfect target registration error and a target registration error, errors on your registration of X millimeter may be good enough for certain applications and not relevant for other applications. It is really context dependent. So if I just tell you I have a registration algorithm and its target registration error is across the its maximal target registration error is five millimeters, it doesn't tell you if it's applicable or not. You have to know what is the uh, desired accuracy there. So without further ado, let's start going through the notebook. And this in this notebook we use the Poppy model. And that is a model of a 40 resp respiring uh, patient, and uh, it's a 40 CT. And a radiologist localized corresponding points across all of the respiratory phases. So we have a ground truth, t a set of target points across this uh, 40 CT. So we'll load it and what I overlay here is the lung mask overlaid onto a, a, a coronal view of the patient. And if I move this, I'm moving between the two volumes because I have two volumes here. And we can change the, sli the slice that we're looking at. And then again, move between the two volumes, you can see the respiratory motion and that the masks are uh, well aligned. Again, this is the ground truth, so nothing uh, very exciting there. So let's move over here and define it, getting some uh, more of the data there. And here in the registration framework, we uh, to initialize the beast spline, it's slightly different from these other initializations. Uh, in this case, I need to define the, uh, the grid itself. So where do I place my control points? So what I know is that I want them to be spaced uh, 5 centimeters, so it's 50 millimeters uh, per uh, each direction for X, Y, and Z. And uh, I know the image physical size, so if this is the spacing and physical uh, uh, distances that I want between my uh, control points, then I can compute what is the mesh size for uh, the X, each of the axes. And I get the mesh size from this as a result, and I'm uh, 
quart uh, dividing it by four because this is the uh, mesh size that I want for the highest uh, level of my pyramid. So uh, that is where the distances between uh, two pixels are the largest. So I just will use a quarter of that mesh size because th I want this to be five centimeters, the distance between each of the control points. And in the initial, tr uh, I create the B spline in the initial transformation using the B-spline transform initializers. It gets the mesh size, the B-spline order, and the uh, image. And I set the initial transform as B-spline. This is different from the set initial transform that we used in the previous notebook uh, because it allows me to uh, give uh, scale factors. And these are the scale factors uh, how do I uh, multiply the mesh uh, size? So initially it's whatever the size was given, then it's doubled at the lower level of the pyramid, and then when I get to my original image resolution, I want it to be four times the mesh size that I started with. That's why I uh, uh, did it a quarter here. So. Uh, Again, setting metric as mean squares. This is pretty much one of the few cases where we can use this type of uh, similarity metric because uh, we're dealing with a 40 CT. So the patient, it's the same patient. They were lying down in the CT. They were just breathing and the, the images were acquired. So uh, we expect that the, uh, the intensities to not change for the uh, corresponding points. And finally, I'm using the LBF GS2 optimizer because it's uh, op it's the right optimizer and it's set up for working with large parameter spaces, which the B-spline uh, transform is. And now let's run it. That takes a while, so bear with me. Okay, so it reached the maximum number of iterations. That's good enough for us in this case. We could have increased the number of iterations, allowing it to con really converge. But what we're interested in is we can qualitatively evaluate this segmentation by transferring the uh, segmentation from the uh, one uh, respiratory phase to the other. And this is the segmentation overlaid on uh, onto this to the second respiratory phase and after registration let's see what happens it's it looks like it fits better to this respiratory phase and we can look at other regions so this is be how it looked before the, reg the if i just took the identity transform and mapped the segmentation onto the new uh, uh, volume and this is after so before and after and we can see that it Im seems to improve but again that was qualitative we took the registration the segmentation and just visualized it to see that it was really the registration is going in the right direction and as I said earlier with the poppy model we have points localized in both models and once we have the transformation, we can compare the distances between the mapped point and its corresponding point in this in the uh, second vol in the moving volume. So let's see what the results are. And it looks like we started with a mean distance of five that went down to 1.6 millimeters, and maximum distance of 14, and that went down to seven. And one thing to note: these are ver these are summaries. What we just uh, 
computed are summaries of the target registration error. We really don't know what is the distribution of it, so we can plot the distribution of the uh, distances between corresponding points before and after registration, and we can see that registration greatly improved the distances between corresponding points. Again, uh, this gives us better understanding of the uh, registration errors, but as I said earlier, registration errors vary in space too, and that is not conveyed by a histogram like this. It's better than a summary, which just give, gives us the mean, standard deviation, and max error, but where are these errors? And we can plot them so we can look at these are the errors before the registration and this is how they look after the registration and an interesting aspect seems to be that this point this point was pretty close before doing anything and after registration it seemed to have uh, this is going in the right wrong direction because the error there is larger than it was before registration Again, this has to do with the use of a B, the B-spline transform because it's controlling a region, the formation across a region in space. So if the a grid is not fine enough, you can deform and the region is uh, becoming more similar, but that's an average across the whole region. It might be that there is a small area in that region that is the deformation is essentially uh, going in the wrong direction. So again, we can see the spatial distribution of the uh, target registration errors, and we can pretty much see the shape of the two lungs, and that's that for a uh, B-spline uh, based registration and registration evaluation. Again, highlighting errors and uh, are a uh, task dependent. So this result might be good enough if you're just looking at the top of the lungs and that's the region that you're interested in, uh, then y this registration only improved. If you're only looking at uh, one lung and this lung, then everything's perfect. If you're looking at this region, then maybe this is a problem. So again, you need to understand the distribution of your uh, target registration errors. In SimpleITK, moving on, we have a, a demons-based uh, set of registration algorithms. Uh, they are outside the registration framework, the image registration method. So these are a set of independent uh, filters uh, that you can use. Uh, but the pr not problem, but a feature is, okay, you don't have access to the uh, multi-resolution framework. So we implemented our own, and it's pretty easy with simple IDK to essentially smooth, resample, create a pyramid yourself, and implement a multi-scale demons approach where this framework receives the registration algorithm and all the parameters, similar to what we did with the image registration framework, and we've we can run that and after we select one of the registration uh, filters, in this case fast symmetric force demons registration filter, and add the callback so that we can see that it's running in the right direction and just let it run. And again, bear with me, a non-rigid, these deformable registration uh, tasks take much longer than a rigid or affine registration but within reasonable bounds given that uh, they, this should terminate shortly
if you listen closely you can hear my laptop uh, chugging at it it's uh, it might require a more decent workstation than a standard laptop but it is doable as you can see okay finally finished so we can see again registration seems to have improved for, to 1.63 millimeters I don't remember what the original was what were the original errors uh, the original errors were 5 and 14 so this result is much nicer and from 5 and 14 it went to 1.63 and 5 millimeters is the max error again uh, in this case we show how to uh, evaluate using segmentation but in a quantitative manner uh, in the uh, earlier uh, cells in this notebook I just transferred the segmentation and visually inspected and it looked better and I was a happy camper but that's not uh, that doesn't work well, and uh, that that's not how you we evaluate things in science. So we have to have a quantitative evaluation. In this case, we transfer the segmentation, and we can compute a variety of things between the two segmentations because we have a segmentation on the fixed volume and on the moving volume. We can compute overlap measures surface distance measures and things of that sort we'll get back to that in a, another video but this cell essentially computes a variety of uh, uh, segmentation evaluation uh, and so before registration we had a 0.88 uh, jacquard index and after registration it's 96 dice went from 93 to 0.98 and so forth so uh, again seemed that the registration is working uh, and we can evaluate it this in this form if we have a segmentation at hand and not uh, points corresponding points across the data sets now that we've covered both global registration and local registration using uh, deformations will look at a clinical application this is finally we meet the real world or uh, so our goal in this uh, work was to create a panoramic long uh, limb uh, image from multiple uh, x-rays here now this is to measure the hip knee angle uh, to be included in a, a clinical trial that was the uh, clinical motivation now uh, let's get familiar with our data before we do anything so we have three uh, x-rays from the hip knee and leg here and one of the things is okay we want to register these notice that the overlaps between them are not that great you know it's if I initialize these images using the centered transform initialization nothing useful would happen from that so we can see that it's maybe a third of the image uh, the third bottom half of this matches the third top of half of this and third top not and uh, same thing here for this image and this image so always good to understand your data first before starting to do uh, registration or segmentation or anything else so let's look at uh, the intensity distribution and it's pretty interesting here uh, this is all the background uh, 
essentially all of this is very high intensities. So uh, that, that's uh, a bimodal distribution that we have here. And another interesting thing is this is a UI that allows us to select a region of interest in the image and we can then plot the intensity, the mean intensity profile. So for every row here we have a value and this is uh, the plot there and it's interesting to see because x-rays have uh, all kinds of phenomena. One of them is the heel effect. If you're interested you should go read, uh, in x-rays you should go read about that but in this region where it's all air we expect I would have expected the intensity to be uniform and it definitely is not uniform and if I select let me clear this and let's just select just out of curiosity let's see what does the profile from this look like that region and here and it's clear you know this is a more complex region but here we can clearly identify this marker here in this dip in the intensity values so again in a region where we expected the only air and it should have been a uniform uh, intensity distribution we got uh, very significant variations in there so we will be using correlation and not uh, uh, mean squares so Transformation type in this case is just a translation in 2D. Now, because we are uh, the overlap between the images is not that great, and it's only in a certain region, we uh, use an exploration exploitation uh, approach where we first try a variety of initial positions using the exhaustive optimizer. And then afterwards, we run us the second phase of registration using gradient descent. So with, with uh, the exhaustive optimizer, I uh, can also record all of the intensity values that it is uh, evaluating. The parameter values there and the uh, uh, similarity metric value. So I'll do that and then we can plot those. So let's do that and run this. And what I can see is this is the plot for each of the, uh, this is the similarity metric as a function of the uh, translation. So negative correlation and th that's the minimum there in the red dot, same thing here between this is the knee to hip and this is the ankle to knee and again this is based on the set of uh, values that I set for the exhaustive optimizer and then recorded all of them and finally plotted the whole thing so that, that's some uh, neat things you can do with simple ITK and okay so we've got these initial uh, such, uh, values and let's take the best the, the minimum uh, and uh, those and we see that the knee hip correlation is minus 84 and ankle to hip correlation is minus 0.99 it's not going to get better than this but maybe we could improve on this and we can see here that yeah they don't seem to be aligned that well even though this is the best value the exhaustive optimizer found but uh, so instead of uh, starting with just the best value from the exhaustive optimizer, we can start from multiple values. If we just record all those and sort them, we can start uh, multiple registrations and see if uh, which one gives us the best convergence, the best similarity metric value in the end. So we don't need to limit ourselves just to the best value the exhaustive optimizer uh, provides. We can get all the values from the exhaustive optimizer 
and then select the K best and start registrations from those and the best result from the, the uh, all those initializations that will be our uh, final registration as you can see it improved here and we're getting a 0.92 uh, correlation between those two images uh, versus the 0.84 so we have greatly improved the alignment there and that is our final result so some other questions uh, food for thought you can uh, does the final does this best transformation correspond to the best initial it may not you should uh, take a look and is there a optimal parameter space sampling for the exploration stage because if you see we look back at those functions you can see that the minimum here was at the edge of the uh, exploration region so if we had continued in this direction maybe we'd, we would have started at a better location for optima for our final registration so that's an open question for you to explore so with that will conclude the registration portion of this tutorial. See you soon in the next video.